he has a background in chartered accounting, but then from there, he kind of got dwindled up in various things such as studying Islam, classical way, and writing about topics such as Islamic sexuality, erotology, and even race relations within Islam. And what we want to know first and foremost, as I welcome him to Botswana virtually for the first time is, Brother Habib Akande, Assalamu Alaikum, how do you go from studying chartered accounting to then deciding I want to study Islam in the traditional context in Al-Azhar, for example, and then going from that to writing books about sexuality, a very taboo topic in Islam or Muslim culture, if you even want to use that word, which I don't really like, but so people get the picture of that. So tell us, Brother Habib, Assalamu Alaikum, welcome to Botswana. What is your life story and how did you get from point A to point B? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for inviting me, brother Mustaqim. Pleased to be here. Um, it's actually the other way around. So I actually, after I graduated from university, I then went to study Islam. So I went to Egypt for three and a half years. I studied it in Al-Azhar High School and then the university where I, wanted, where I studied Islamic law. Um, I spent a couple of years in the university. Then I wanted to come back. I wanted to make money. So then I went into accountancy. Um, and then whilst I was... Um, during my training, where I qualified as a chartered accountant, I was also writing books, and I wrote my first book on race and the. Um, I, I it was you could say a modern rendition of a classic text by Ibn al-Jawzi, where he spoke about colorism and anti-blackness in the Muslim community. So I wrote a book um, entitled "Illuminating the Darkness," speaking about the prominent role that black people have and North Africans have made in, in Islam and counteracting the the narrative that Islam is anti-black. And then I'm um, subsequent to that. Um, so that book came out in 2012. Then I wrote my next book, A Taste of Honey, which explores sexuality and erotology in Islam. Erotology being the study of sexual desire, sexual ethics, and the art of lovemaking. Um, it's a, like you said, it is a taboo topic in some Muslim communities, not all. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight the contributions that Muslim scholars have made to the study of human sexuality and um, ex and hopefully to tr try and revive this tradition because I do think it's important. I think a lot of Muslims since colonization, we have become um, very uncomfortable, shall I say, speaking about sex and intimacy, even though everyone, whether you like it or not, we're all sexual beings. We're all intrigued um, by sexuality. Um, and again, I just think that as Muslims, I think rather than being reactive, I think we should be proactive. And we've got a rich tradition dating back to the ninth century where prominent Muslim scholars such as Al-Jahid, al, al um, amongst others, wrote explicit erotic literature and um, some of it was in the form of advice some of it was in the form of entertainment and um, there was also a number of muslim women scholars as well as female experts who spoke about this topic so again for me it was quite fascinating to see how in pre-modern times a lot of muslim scholars were not uncomfortable to address this topic whereas nowadays um in the modern world unfortunately i think a lot of muslims even uh, many of our scholars are well aware of this rich erotological tradition um, have reservations kind of speaking about it. So I wanted to revive, um, shall we say, the erotology tradition. And that's why I published The Taste of Honey. And since then, I've written a couple of other books around African Arab erotology. And then I also wrote another book um, about kunyaza, which is an ancient African technique, which has a reputation for helping women um, expel fluid, shall we say, and the climax during heterosexual encounters. Um, that book came out in 2018. And then it was picked up by the BBC in 2020. Um, where they made a documentary called The Orgasm Gap. And they attended one of my workshops in London. Um, and since then, the documentary has done really well, over 16 million viewers um, and counting worldwide. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was a documentary that looks at, it was exploring the differences, the way female sexual pleasure is taught in the UK and Rwanda. And like I said, the way I was I present or I teach is um, to adults, um, obviously coming from a heterosexual perspective, but trying to debunk a number of myths that are associated with female sexuality, both within the Muslim world and non-Muslim world, and then also trying to help couples, women in particular, experience um, um, climax with, with their male partner. So that's in a nutshell kind of like the different kind of hats that I wear, um, being an author, um, sex educator, historian, chartered accountant, um, by profession working in the financial industry. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> 